going to be going over your account and general information to help you see better success from the platform from the get-go. Now, just to introduce myself, my name is Rob McNeil, and I'm a success manager here at Taboola. One of my primary goals here is to work with clients just like you to make sure that you feel comfortable and prepared to run and manage campaigns on your own. In my general day to day, I work with over 300 clients of all company sizes and business models, each with a different primary goal with running on Taboola. My goal for you is to leave today with the proper tools at your disposal to run and manage these campaigns, knowing that you're set up for the best success. Now, just a couple notes about today. There will be some time for questions at the very end of this presentation, but please feel free to use the questions drop down box in your GoToWebinar control panel to submit your questions at any time throughout the session, and we will address them at the end. You will also receive a follow up after the session with a full recording, should you need to reference the material again. And of course, as your campaigns run, you will have 24 7 support available at support at tabula.com. And you can also find any other information pertaining to your account in our Advertiser Help Center found by typing in help.tabula.com. Today we're going to be covering several features of your account, starting first with the basics. What is Taboola? We'll move on to accessing and navigating through your account. Then we'll take a look at your tracking opportunities. We are going to also look at creating and targeting your campaigns, as well as how to look at your performance and your insights and create optimizations along the way. So let's start with what is Taboola? Well, Taboola is a discovery platform that's going to help you reach new clients by surfacing information that they may like, but never knew existed. On search, you will find that there's intent. With social, there's often referral. But what about users that don't know how to look for you yet? That's where we come in. Taboola's discovery algorithm will reach users when they are in the exploration phase. And it's for this reason that Taboola is a great resource for exposing new users to your content and bringing previous users back around to your site. So let's get started. First, we're just gonna take a look at accessing your account. You can start by navigating to backstage.taboola.com. You can also log in by going to taboola.com and clicking on sign in in the top right corner. You'll be logging in with the email address that you use to create the account. Note that if you can't remember the email that you had used, you can email support at taboola.com and they can assist you. But once you do log in, you will see a page that looks something like this. Now, for those of you who have not yet begun your campaigns, this page will appear blank, but not a worry there as the campaigns will run, you will see material popping up here with your breakdown of insights. Now, as an account overview, we're gonna take a look at a few pieces, first with the billing management, as well as campaign management, where you go to run and manage all of your campaign activity. And then we also have the Taboola pixel section, which we'll take a deeper look at, which is our universal tool to be able to apply tracking material and create retargeting opportunities. So just to get us start with the account overview in the billing section, you will see two portions. There's the billing management page, and this is where you can add a credit card, change the credit card that you have on file. You can also see the last billing date applied to the credit card. If you're to click on the payment history slide, what you find is just a history of payments that you've made, along with any VAT or fees that have also been applied to those charges. Now, just a quick note, if you do add a credit card and the default message just says something like automatic billing enabled, but error or error retrieving data, it typically just means that we're waiting for the credit card to send us back an appropriate signal. That should typically take a couple minutes to an hour. Once that is done, you are ready to build out your campaign. But now we want to look at the actual campaign management and creating the Taboola pixel. So we're going to look first with the Taboola pixel material. And then we're going to dive into looking at your campaign management page where you will go to build and create your campaigns. We'll look at the top campaign content where you can make adjustments to your existing campaign inventory. And then finally, we're going to look through your campaign summary where your insights will live and also additional optimization tools for future campaign performance. So let's go ahead and dive into your campaign pixels. The Taboola pixel is a snippet of code that you will be able to place on your website that will perform specific tasks 
and this includes tracking multiple activities, identifying a user's path through your site, building custom audiences, as well as other features included as well. When you click on either the conversions or the audiences page for the very first time, you will see a page that looks like this. Notice there's features for creating the pixel. This is your first step. When you create the pixel, you will be given a base code. And this base code will need to be applied to the header of every single page on your website. Once that is placed, we are now ready to build out your conversions and your audiences. Once your base code is placed, we can now define your conversions by clicking on the conversions tab on the left hand side of your dashboard. Once you click on new conversion, you will see you'll be given a few options, starting first with the URL type. This will allow you to use whole or partial URL conditions to track activities. So for example, if you're looking to find a purchase and users get to a common thank you page, just include that thank you portion of the common URL string and we will now be able to track that activity. We also have event type conversions. Now these are a bit more dynamic. When you click on an event type, you will be given several options and an additional snippet of code that will need to be added to the page where you are tracking this action. Now this is either below the header for a page or in the relevant HTML snippet for an inline event. So some examples of this would include when users add items to a cart or purchases a product with a dynamic order ID. If you're using a tag manager, like Google Tag Manager, you can also use this event type to track users who've been on page for a certain number of times or who've been on to a certain percentage scroll down a given page. We do create some pre-custom events for you, but you also have the ability to create your own. As you enter the fields, the snippet of the code will actually update for you so that you can implement it correctly. Like conversions, we are also able to create audiences or retargeting pools based on URL, event, and now lookalike conditions. For the URL portion, the same process applies. You just simply need to enter the full or partial URL string. It will be able to create a retargeting pool and store user data that you can use at a later advantage. A good opportunity for this would be to reblog a, a blog post and bring users back around to a sales page or maybe you create a pool for an add to cart page. And for those who have not actually completed a sale, we can drive that sale again down the line. Likewise, we can create these by events. Again, building these out with a snippet of code where you place it and you want to actually track a user activity. Another example, if you do have a dynamic video field, for example, you can possibly place an event code after say 30 seconds in a video and maybe retarget those users to bring them back around. And our most recently added feature is the new lookalike audience. When you go to the audiences tab, simply click on the drop down arrow found next to the new audience button and select the lookalike audience option. This will allow you to upload a hashed email list between about 7,500 and 750,000 emails. Once uploaded into our system, we will generate five new custom audiences for you to target. Now, these five audiences focus on scale and similarity, with audience one being most similar to your email list, essentially favoring similarity over scale, and audience five being the widest list while still matching your customer base, ultimately favoring scale over similarity. Now, if you're unsure of which ones to use, audience three or four will be a good place to start as they find a neutral middle ground between scale and similarity. Please note that this process can take about two business days for the actual audience to be created once you do upload that file. Now, once we have the pixel in place, we are now ready to go ahead and create and target your campaigns. So you're gonna start by clicking on the campaign management page found on the left-hand side of your dashboard. You'll be taken to a page that looks like this, and it will have a list of all campaigns that you have created with a few tools to manipulate the material in front of you. In the top left, you can filter by material, so you can look at all existing or running campaigns. You can take a look at campaigns that are pending review from our content team, 
as well as many other campaign options. On the right-hand side, you'll see four different icons next to each campaign item. The first one will be either a pause or a play button. This allows you to start or stop a campaign at any time, giving you complete control of your spend. The pencil icon will take you to the campaign properties. This is where we go to adjust any targeting settings. This is also what the page will look like once we click on new campaign. The third icon in that looks like a list, this will take you to your campaign inventory where all of the thumbnails and headlines are held for users to actually experience online. And finally, that double page icon is a simple duplication tool. It will copy exact campaigns with the inventory. So if you do want to create the same material but slightly adjust the targeting, this makes your life a whole lot easier. So when you're ready to begin, we're going to either click on new campaign or you can click on the pencil icon to adjust material as the campaign runs. And we'll first be taken to a page that looks like this. We'll look at the campaign ID section first, starting with the name. Now, this is not going to be published, but you do want to be specific here for the best housekeeping. So ideally include the platform you're targeting and any other audience specs that you might be including just for the best organizational purposes. The next field down is the branding text. Now note that this is going to be published with your headline. So you do need to be specific to the landing page users are going to click out to. There are more specific guidelines found in our help center if you are operating on a unique campaign like a mobile app download. But note that you mostly want to aim for having the target URL or the brand name of the landing page. The next field is the marketing objective. Now, while this is optional, we do recommend placing an opportunity in here because this allows our algorithm to categorize your campaign with others that are, have similar KPIs. So if you are looking for a lead generation campaign, select lead generation and our algorithm will know to start searching for those opportunities a little bit more closely. In the time frame section below, you have start and end dates. These are campaign run times, so you can set specific starting dates. You can set end dates. These are great for short campaigns, something like uh, as, as we approach the holiday season, we're getting to Black Friday in a month and a half. So a good Black Friday month long campaign for an e-commerce play would be great to put in here. And then lastly on this page, we have a campaign schedule. Now you're going to default to run 24 seven, but you also have the opportunity to set a custom time window. You can adjust the specific hours and the specific days that your campaign is set to run. And you can also adjust the time zone that you're operating in. This is excellent if you are looking to test out new countries or if you are running something like an e-commerce campaign where users are a lot less likely to purchase a product, say, in the early hours of the morning. As we continue to scroll down this page, we're going to get to the next section, which is our campaign targeting. Now we'll look at a couple fields here, starting first with the location targeting. Once you add a country field in, you will note that you can have other locations included, and we can narrow this down by region or state, by DMA, and in many locations, we can even target by zip code. Once you have the location set, you can identify the platform targeting. Now, the default does display to targeting all three platforms, but as you begin to run, we do recommend separating these out. Typically, you'll find that Bids like smartphone will come in at about half the bidding price of desktop. And so it's best to split your budget across these three platforms in separate campaigns, giving the CPCs a stronger performance towards a single platform and also giving you cleaner insights once we do look at those through the campaign summary. The remaining three we will look on the coming pages, so keep tight. Starting first with the operating system targeting. Now, we can choose to include or exclude specific operating systems. For the desktop side of things, we do have Mac OS X, Linux, and Windows targeting available. And then we also have iOS and Android targeting for mobile and tablet devices. If ever you find that one platform or one operating system might perform better than another, it's always great to separate these out. You'll also notice that once you do select an option, you can then further target to a subcategory. So maybe you want to target a various release. Maybe we want to look at iOS 11 versus iOS 10. 
As we continue along, we then get to our audience targeting. And this is probably one of our most dynamic fields for you to use. We'll start first by looking at the campaign clickers. What campaign clickers will do is it will retarget users who have clicked on one of your own previous Taboola advertisements. In the example shown here, book reviews-mobile might have been an initial campaign targeting a blog post. And we want those users to then redirect to an actual sales page. So I will create a new follow-up campaign, target those same users, and now I can drive them deeper down the funnel. This is especially useful for examples when you cannot place the pixel. So if you wanted to run an earned media piece, say for example, a company like the New York Times writes an article about you, you can run a campaign to that article and then retarget those users with campaign clickers into your homepage. Next, we look at our custom audiences. This ties directly to the audiences built by the Taboola Pixel. This is generally a wider audience from the campaign clickers because the Taboola Pixel will catch any user from any source. So here you would create a retargeting pool, type in the name here, and now the campaign is reaching those specific users. Another good example here is when we create that add to cart retargeting pool. I now want to create a follow-up campaign targeting those users and encouraging them to actually complete the sale. And then we get to our audience segments. In many cases, it might look like a data marketplace on your screens. We work with thousands of different segments across multiple data providers to find demographic and user-based targeting. And we can go very wide with this. We have users targeted by age, by gender. You can also go very narrow. For example, we want people who have recently, recently purchased Dove soap or chocolate lovers. And then there's a slew of segments found in between where you can reach various positions within a company, certain income levels, families of certain sizes, and many more. A few notes to consider when you are looking at your targeting though. Before you choose any specific data segments to run, we do recommend getting a run of network campaign going for at least two weeks. Now a run of, a run of network campaign is simply a campaign with no data targeting. And this will allow our system to reveal which segments are actually engaging with your content the most. Also beware of layering on too many targets as this could shrink your audience too much. As a general rule, you are going to want to increase your CPCs to remain competitive anytime you shrink your audience size. So say for example, you go from targeting the United States to simply targeting a state like New York, we're going to want to increase our CPCs to maintain competition levels and still see scalability in those locations. Your campaign summary ultimately will provide useful insights into what targeting to apply. So if you're unsure about which directions to go, let the system reveal that to you. We will show these opportunities a little bit later in this presentation, but know that we do provide a lot of transparent info with the aim of helping you determine which audience is best to target. Once we have our targeting set up, we are now ready to set the bidding and the budget for your campaign. Now, the bid amount is the place we'll start. This is a location where you set your CPC bid. This is your default competition level. Here, this will determine how much you're scaling. So if you're not seeing enough impressions or enough activity actually being served, users are not clicking, a good default is always to increase your CPCs. That will typically give you higher competition levels. You will stand out more in our widget placements and you will get more clicks as a result. Note that we do have a new feature called Smart Bid. We are going to look at this on the next slide. And this has been a very immensely useful tool for users who have already engaged with this product feature. Next section below allows you to set a CPA goal. Now this is an optional field and it will not change the performance of your campaign, but it's always something good to have in mind. If you're just starting out, you can set an arbitrary CPA goal. Having something in place is always good for optimizations down the line as we have a number to focus on and it gives us better opportunities for improvement. When we look at your spending limit, this is the amount of budget dedicated for the entire campaign. Now the two options you see on the right there, the entire campaign and monthly flight, this is how we allocate your spending limit. If you're on a monthly flight, that spending limit is gonna treat, be treated on a 30 day window and it will reset to zero on the following month. So if you're running a rolling campaign, monthly flight is a great opportunity. 
If, however, you want the campaign to stop when you hit the end of the spending limit, switch it instead to the entire campaign. Next, we will look at the daily ad delivery. This is how we allocate your budget. The balanced option will allow us to split that spending limit on a balanced pace across the lifetime of the campaign. The system will attempt to split it evenly across the days and hours that you have left. And note that this is a flexible timeline. So if there are specific increases in click surges, the system might allocate less budget later down the line as we saw more to budget use in a given day. The accelerated ad delivery simply means that we'll spend the budget as fast as we possibly can. As clicks come in, the spend will occur. And then the last option there is a strict option. This allows you to set a daily cap for any campaigns that you wish to run. Note that there is a buffer of up to two times the daily spend to account for those same click searches I mentioned previously. And then lastly, we have our creative traffic allocation. Our default when running any campaign inventory items is to, over time, increase performance to the ads that are getting the highest click-through rates. If, however, you want all ads to serve equally, you would instead switch that to even. Even allows us to just set the campaign items out equally, and this will give you more manual control, and it's great for A-B testing. A couple notes about this. If you are choosing to use even traffic allocation, you won't see as much scale as the optimized option because we're not pushing towards where the clicks are occurring the most. And also, you never want to switch a campaign in the middle of its run back down to even, as that could reel back the performance of the algorithm and you could see a major drop in scale. I mentioned previously we are going to look at the Smart Bid briefly. This is our newest feature added. And this is going to adjust on a per impression basis in favor of more conversions or more page views. And this is an option that you can choose to set. And the benefit of this is that at the moment when you make manual adjustments, you can only do so by seeing it on a click by click basis. This, however, will adjust on a per impression basis. So it is highly active and it is getting much more granular than you have the ability to do yourself. This will be the default setting and it should be your primary option when setting up your campaigns. But note that there's also a buffer in place for the bid to not exceed less than 80% of the bid that you have set, and it will never go over 50% above the bid you have set. So this helps you limit any overspend or any takeoff and activity that you might see. And then of course, you can still make manual bid adjustments by site. We'll look at that more later once we look at the campaign summary, and that will, that will supersede the smart bid. So note that when you are on smart bid, you still get full control over your campaign performance and can make adjustments to lower your CPA as you see fit. And then lastly, on the actual campaign setup page, you will see a tracking code section. We default to include Taboola referral material. And as this passes back to your Google Analytics, this is going to be appended to all of your campaign items. If you look in our Help Center, we also do have additional macros, so you can also pull back more information, for example, by site or by headline. Once you're all set with this, scroll to the bottom, hit continue, and you'll see a confirmation page to confirm all the targeting opportunities you have set. Once that's set, we're ready to go ahead and build your inventory out. As you get to this landing page, you will see a field to include your landing page URLs. Now you can choose to add them one at a time, or if you do wish to add multiple advertisements at once, simply apply those right here in fashion, just separated by a new line, and then click on add on the right hand side. Once you do add them, you will see they will appear below and we will initially crawl the website for a base headline and a base title. But of course, the purpose of having multiple campaign items is to test out or A-B test your headlines and your thumbnail diversity. So to get those changed, you can simply click on the headline or the thumbnail and you'll get fields to adjust the material. Now something to call out really quick is if you click on a thumbnail, you have a local file option where you can upload your material. You can upload it by URL. But we also have a feature called the image library. And this is powered by our relationship with Getty Images. The image library is entirely free for you to use, so don't hesitate to test out new creatives using this feature. You can adjust by adding or removing keywords that you think are fitting to your particular end product. 
And this will give you a lot of brightly colored or diverse images that you can use to help offer new advertisements for us to run to. Once you have the material set, you can see all of your ads as displayed here. Note that you have the option to click out to the landing page to make sure that it is correctly working. You also have different columns to identify what exactly you're looking at. And once you're ready, you go ahead and hit finish along the bottom. The campaigns will enter a pending status and our content review team will take between one and three business days to manually check the website for policy compliance. A full, list, a full list of our advertising policy guidelines can be found online, so be sure to adhere to those as they can determine how your campaign is going to run. And just like that, the campaign is ready to go. And once we see it, start seeing clicks come in, we are ready to track your performance. Starting first with the top campaign content section found on the left side of your dashboard. Here you will see a breakdown of all of the inventory items you have decided to run. In the top left, you can filter by specific campaigns, and you also have the ability to pause out any creatives. So if you're looking to optimize your performance over time, consider pausing out the creatives that aren't doing so well, and this will give us a stronger pool of creatives to work with. Beyond the top campaign content, we're now ready to look at your campaign summary. Now, there are several options to organize your data that you're looking at. Starting first with the customized date range, you can change the material in the top right corner. You also have various fields to select through on the right hand side. We will default to show you the spend and the clicks that are coming through, but you can layer on any other fields that you might like. You also have various tabs to look at the material in front of you, including by day of the week, by campaign, by site, which we'll look at in a moment, by country, which also gives you a region breakdown using that drop down arrow. You can also look at your platform performance and as well third party data. You can also sort by specific campaigns. So if you are looking to make buy side adjustments, select a specific campaign and optimize from there. And then note there's also a columns field available to you. This allows you to set up or view multiple conversions. So when you set up that Taboola pixel, so you have a conversion for users who actually complete a sale, but you're also tracking the activity of users who get to the add to cart page. Here's how you can break that out in your campaign summary. As I mentioned, we get to the buy site tab here. Now note, we are looking at a specific campaign. You'll see a breakdown or a chart of all of these specific sites that you are listed in front of. The data below will give you a lot more granular details, including the click-through rates and number of clicks, the average cost for that particular placement, and then other activity like the actions, CPA, and spend to those particular sites. On the right-hand side, you will see a few 10% icons as well as a red circle. These allow you to block out any sites that are not driving the performance that you're looking to see. And those 10% icons allow you to make bid adjustments on a per site basis. So referencing back to smart bid, when you have a smart bid automatically making adjustments for you, you can still come here and adjust the bids on a buy site basis. And this will override any smart bid that you have in place without taking the smart bid off of the campaign as a whole. The other tab that's really useful to look at is the buy audience tab. Now I mentioned earlier, we run with thousands of data segments, but if ever you're unsure which segments to utilize, Set it to none, and instead we will give you the information or the data for your performance across the segments for which you've been visible. On the left hand side, you will notice a series of white boxes. So if you find that there's specific segments that are actually driving strong engagement for you, select those opportunities and then just above click duplicate using audiences. This will copy that exact campaign and simply layer on that new segment that you found successful for. And we can now run the campaign towards those performers, now knowing that the data in front of us will confirm that it is going to be a strong performing segment in the first place. So in summary, your first step should always be to place that pixel. This is a dynamic universal pixel that gives us a lot of tracking opportunities and gives us more to see than just the clicks coming through. We can now optimize for things like CPA. We can also use it to build retargeting pools 
So if you are looking to bring users from the awareness stage of the marketing funnel, and we want to bring them to conversion, that is what the pixel is for. Also, more creatives mean more to test. We recommend having at least five to 10 creatives to start, but you can certainly add more as well. And if you're unsure which targeting to apply, start with a run of network. This means no specific targeting other than a platform and a location, and then our system will reveal insights for you. Now you do have a lot of targeting options, so beware of going too narrow, as that would affect your competition levels. And note that your performance will change through time due to seasonality and other factors like higher competition or increased advertising on the platform itself. You will see activity change that you can dynamically operate with. And if you need help making decisions on that, you have a resource through support. So we Unmuted. do now have time to go over various questions. I'm going to introduce my colleague, Sarah, who's going to join in and help me out with these. Thanks, Rob. Um, so first question we have is, um, you went over how to set up a campaign. If I need help as I get started, is there a resource I can use that will walk me through? Absolutely. So this first off, this particular webinar is going to be available on our resources page. A good resource to use is tabuli.com forward slash resources. There you will find our webinars, you will find case studies and blog posts on how the performance will operate. Even more so though, you are going to have the opportunity for uh, using our help center, which will have full activity on how to navigate through your particular platform. And then also your support at tabula.com alias can give you good information as well. Great, thanks. Um, that almost answers the next question. Um, if I need help or have any questions regarding my account or campaigns, who can I contact? Certainly. Uh, as mentioned previously, support at tabula.com is available 24 seven. And those resources I mentioned previously will also be accessible at all hours of the day. Great. Um, next question, will we get a copy of the presentation once completed? Yes, of course. This presentation will be uploaded to not only our Taboola YouTube page, it will also be nested into our webinars resource page. And you will also get a follow-up email with all of this. Since you have signed up for this webinar, it will come to you directly. Great. Um, when looking at the campaign summary, how is conversion rate calculated? The conversion rate is dependent on where you place the various conversion pixels. So say, for example, you choose to place a single conversion pixel on, let's say the thank you or purchase page after someone buys a product. The CPA is then calculated by tracking the number of actions, essentially the number of hits to that pixel, and then it's divided across the spend for that campaign. So your CPA will be the number of actions to the overall cost. If you choose to add multiple conversions, say you want to track conversions and add to cart material, the columns field will allow you to break these out separately so you can see the conversions independently. You can also see the CPA independently. Perfect. Thanks. Um, next question. How often is the data in campaign management dashboard updated? For instance, the spend column. Absolutely. So the campaign management page is going to update almost immediately to keep you on top of the spend. But the most accurate data is going to be reported via the campaign summary page. This runs on about a two hour data delay and it will update, it will show you the last data point that we are displaying. So say around noon, you might see that the most recent data was updated as of 10 or possibly even 11 a.m. Next question. Can you optimize off of leads as your conversion Absolutely. metric? You can certainly optimize off of leads. The CPA column is really the overall cost per insert conversion. So you can have it as a CPL, which is your cost per lead, depending on where you place that conversion pixel. You can have it as a cost per action or acquisition. There's also cost per install. So if you're running a mobile app download, that will also display there. It's always going to show as the CPA, but this is entirely dependent on wherever you place the conversion pixel. Great. Um, and last question for now um, is 
related to attribution. So why am I seeing a difference in backstage data versus Google Analytics data? Absolutely. So all platforms do run on different attribution models. With Taboola, we run on a 30-day last click attribution. So the actions that we are showing are Taboola clicks that occurred in the last 30 days. And also we will display that conversion when the click occurred. So for example, if a user clicks on a Taboola widget on say a Tuesday, but then they come back to directly to your site and convert the day after, the conversion will still appear on that Tuesday when they clicked on the recommendation itself, not when the action actually occurred. With Google Analytics, their attribution model is different, so they may place your conversion in a different location. So there might often be discrepancies between the various tracking platforms you are using. If you do have further questions on how to actually identify where these conversions are coming from, then you can certainly email support. But know that we tie the conversion to when the actual click on your ad occurred, which gives you closer performance to the actual real-time advertisement. And then also, if you wanted to see more information or give strong comparisons, use the UTM macros found in our help center to offer that comparison or that data pullback to your Google Analytics. Now, more will be coming out on our attribution, and we will also be introducing very soon a view through attribution. So you will also be able to soon track users, not only that have clicked on the ad, but those who have seen an impression and later convert through maybe an alternate source. Great, and looks like that's it for questions. All right, so if that's it for questions right now, we can wrap this up. I, I just wanna say thank you everyone for joining in, listening in. As you note, and as we've said multiple times now, you can contact support at taboola.com for any more information. You can go to our Advertiser Help Center by going to help.taboola.com for more info. You will also receive a recording of this webinar direct to your email within the next few days. And lastly, a great resource to always tap into is www.taboola.com forward slash resources forward slash webinars. Thank you again. We hope you all have a wonderful day and a wonderful rest of the week. We look forward to helping your campaigns perform.